sum up a 29 point lock. Bad. That was a bad game. Um, tough night, tough afternoon, rather. Um, and it pretty much came down to the end of the second quarter. There was a four minute stretch where they won a 16 3 run. And essentially, that was the game. Coming out of third, you know, we didn't respond as well as we should have and just got, got away from us. Three point defense has, has been a relative strength for you guys all year to give up 19 season high. Yeah. Uh, what was different today? Uh, just I think the overall awareness to, and urgency to get to those shooters. Um, to Tatum's credit, he had a night. And, you know, I think you, you know, see 51 points is it's a real number. But uh, I think he was six for eight on pull up threes, which are tough shots. Uh, no excuse, he's been struggling, but he found his rhythm tonight and we just didn't, uh, we didn't make it tough enough. Wes, where was, where were the breakdowns of defending Tatum specifically? Um, I think the biggest thing, there were some decent possessions one-on-one. -on -one. He got it going, so we tried to hit him with the ball out of his hands. Um, and, and then even when we tried to blitz, we weren't in the, in the proper position, you know, to keep, keep him from splitting us, turning the corner. Um, you know, the blitz wasn't impactful. Is that a, these guys have guarded him before, obviously it's not unnecessarily an unfamiliarity with his tendencies, is that breakdown in communication or have you kind of gotten into that yet? Um, I don't think it was overall communication, maybe position, body position, mm -hmm. uh, technique, um, just overall awareness at times uh, where, you know, maybe two, two or three guys are on the same page and the other two, you know, aren't. So it's, uh, you know, there, there is a communication dynamic, but just reading the body position, you see a guy at a certain level, you should understand where your protection spots are. Um, but we, we just have to do a better job of getting the ball out of his hands or a guy like that when he gets a game going. Um, you don't usually necessarily take that long after a game. What was the message for the locker room? Um, you know, just obviously our, uh, the result wasn't what we desired, uh, but no one's feeling sorry for us. So, you know, whether we want to pout and feel feel bad and mope, or we can respond and, uh, you know, change it ourselves. I mean, that's kind of the, my mindset. That was the messaging. Um, you know, this these type of games happen. You know, sadly, it's, uh, this one is tough because, you know, we're all kind of punched in, in the same grouping, you know, as far as records. So these games, you know, almost multiply in effect. And, uh, to stay ahead of teams and, you know, keep ourselves relevant, we have to come away with these type games at home. Yes, we, we understand all the consider organizational considerations that require you to play 11 men right now in the rotation, but given that there are only 36 games, 35 games left, do, does the organization have to shorten the rotation? Thanks. Shorten the rotation earlier than it is. Thanks initially planned no i think this was all kind of uh part of the plan we knew we had to get two key guys back and reintegrated you know at a difficult point or juncture in the season um so that kind of led to you know what we've been doing in the last two weeks or so um but you know there's no you know mandate that we have to play 11 or 12 it was just try to find ways to get these guys going keeping in mind the, the medical limitations um, and when, if and when we're able to get past those thresholds, then myself, the staff will, will make that decision you know, as we see fit. In a similar vein, um, why'd you go away from both Trez and Gaffer to the extent? Well, I mean, when we were down big, it was, you know, we thought it was valuable minutes for, for TB. Um, I threw AG out there for a few, knowing the TB had a limit. Um, Tried Rui at five, you know, it's something we talked about and wanted to see. Uh, at that point, it was, you know, game was pretty much out of hand. So uh, let's take a look at some things and we can see how it worked. Uh, I think he's, you know, gotten progressively better. Um, he looks more comfortable. Uh, he's starting to pick some of the things up, you know, offensively. You know, it's tough. We moved him to five tonight, so he was kind of a little bit disjointed. But overall, I've been pleased with where he's, you know, where he's been and how he's developed. Um, so I, I, you know, I like where he is defensively. He's done, you know, some good things switching. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see how he uh, 
how we look going forward. That's when Jenny tweaked. I don't know what part of his life. Yeah, he took a news of thigh. Yeah, he came back. I mean, they, they took him in the back and wrapped it, you know, took a quick look at it. There didn't seem to be anything substantial. It's probably going to be a little stiff tomorrow, but I can't imagine it being uh, something that would sideline him. Neil. Hey, Coach, kind of just going off of Ava's question, is it more of a elongated discussion in the locker room after a kind of game like this? Uh, no, it wasn't. It was a long, elongated discussion amongst me and my staff, uh, but not the, not the players, no. Christos? Hey, Coach, hope you're doing well. Uh, from your perspective and every, after what you see on the floor tonight, what kind of shake-up this team needs to be back on the winning column and get better on both ends of the floor? I just think the biggest thing is the urgency. We, we've talked about that at length. Um, and it sounds really simplistic, but, you know, the urgency to get to those shooters, urgency to be in the right spot, our urgency to communicate early. Um, you know, our overall energy and approach, you know, that seems to wax and wane at times. And we have to get away from that. If we're going to sustain at a certain level. There has to be, uh, you know, an urgency to do that. And I'm not sure where that's, you know, where the dis disconnect is. I think we all understand that. We just have yet to uh, um, completely get, get to that point and do it, uh, do it every night. Thank you very much, Coach. All right, that's all the time we got for Coach tonight. Appreciate you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. How do you sum up a, a loss like that? Twenty nine points. Uh, first person in the world to say Jesus Christ. Uh, it's embarrassing, honestly. It's, uh, it's probably the one and only word I have for it. What, what was different? Um, for your guys' three point defense, that's been a strength all year, and you guys gave up to see the high nineteen threes. Uh, I mean, we just – you can't just half-ass contest. You know, we got to run guys off the line like we've been doing. And, uh, you know, they haven't necessarily shot the ball well either. And we kind of just let them, especially Jason, we just let him – we just getting practice warm-up shots all night. We got whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted. And we didn't make anything difficult for them. Like, they were able to get two feet in the paint, get their threes, open threes, open looks. Um, there's no sense of urgency, it seemed like, from us on a defensive end. What was it like post-game in the locker room after a loss like this? Very quiet. I mean, you can, I mean, I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, nobody's happy about it. Nobody's, um, you know, nobody's proud of how they play. You know, we all feel like we could be better, and we, we know we're better than that. Uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't positive. It wasn't like, you know, nobody's happy. You know, that's, that's how I'll leave it at that. How do you process this game coming in the same week where you have a game like you did against the Nets? It's tough, man, because we seem like we take one or two steps forward and five back, you know. Um, we, and we, we can't we can't do that, you know. We, we have to understand every game is important, especially at this point. You know, last few before break, you know, teams, that kind of makes or break teams. You know, teams either decide that they're going to go on a run you know, and be really good and talented, you know, and make that push for, you know, for the playoffs or, you know, they kind of start throwing them back and tanking a little bit and not really focused on winning, you know, and I don't want to be in that position. And I damn sure hope that's not our attitude, you know, these last, these next couple, you know, before all star break. Um, I think that's just a, that's just the frustrating part, you know, understand our opponent, you know, Boston hasn't, they were under us tonight, you know, in the seedings. They weren't playing well. They weren't just they weren't gelling well. Um, and we should have took advantage of that. We should have came out aggressive and hit them first. We allowed them to get comfortable, find their rhythm, and they just took off. What's it been like being in the rotation at this moment in time where there's so many guys that Wes is trying to play and three centers and just all the, the changes that we see from night to night? Yeah, I mean it's I mean, it's just it's no surprise. You know, we all uh, see and understand what we're trying to do. 
and you know what we're putting on the floor and it's just it is tough you know from everybody's standpoint my standpoint other guys you know who are in that position of whether or not they play this game play the next game don't play this game play a few minutes here here and there it's tough I mean it's because when you, you try to figure out the rhythm of the team try to figure out the rhythm of you know that player if they have a rhythm uh, it's, it's tough you know I understand it from all sides, you know, the business side of the player's perspective, coach's perspective, it's, it's not an easy decision. You know, I'll be I'll be lying if I sat here and said it was easy on on anybody's behalf. It's not easy. Um, you know, I think that's just where professionalism comes in and, um, you know, just control what you can control and just, you know, be a true sport about it. But uh, I'd be lying if I said it's easy. You know, it's, it's definitely a, it's a task, but, you know, it's, 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 it's doable, I would say. Yeah, I mean, it's tough because we're trying to see TB, you know, and TB was a huge part of our team and our success. And TB had an unfortunate injury, and now he's back, and we want to see him play. You know, the organization wants to see him play. It's the last year in this deal. Like, I get all of that. You know, uh, Gaffer did nothing wrong. You know, I think that's probably the frustrating part on his behalf is that he feels like maybe he did something wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. Uh, it's just kind of, you know, how the game goes, you know, sometimes. But uh, in my, when I'm in those positions, you know, I definitely, I definitely have to, you know, the leadership skills have to come out, you know, encouraging guys, um, you know, giving them the big picture in a way and uh, kind of motivating them and pushing them, you know, that when your opportunity does come, when you're in practice, or you're working out, you know, just, you know, take full advantage of it, you know, showcase what you're able to do and why you should be playing, why you deserve minutes, you know, or go up to coach after practice, after games. And he's uh, he's always straightforward. He has an open door policy. Uh, but I understand the frustrations for sure, you know, but, you know, as a, as a vet, I definitely try to, Try to minimize those those emotions. You know, stay focused on the team. What's the what's the, what's the most important thing? That's us winning. You know, how how can we do that? How can we all contribute to that? Christos. Hey Brad, hope you're doing well. Coach uh, mentioned before the urgency. You mentioned before the sense of urgency. What you need to do as a team to bring that urgency on on your game, especially on the defensive end. Uh, I mean, it's tough. You can't really teach it. I mean, it's 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 a matter of will. Either you want to do it or you don't. You know, either you go hard and you want to compete or tell off and defend. You know, and help your teammate or you don't. You know, it's not. There's nothing we can really practice or work on that's gonna you know say oh this this is gonna make you play better or do it harder. Like no, it it doesn't. That comes from within, you know, we all got to pull that with, you know, look at each other in the mirror and look at ourselves and and be better. You know, we all have to be better. We all have to contribute more than what we're doing. We have to help, help the man next to us more than what we're doing. Um, and, you know, nobody can teach that. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing you can draw up for that. There's nothing you can teach for that. Uh, you know, it's just to have a world to win, period. Thank you very much. Last question, Brianna. Hey, Brad. So, of course, the game didn't end how you wanted it to, but how was it starting off the game with your sons introducing you? <laughs> that was, that would definitely made my day for sure. Uh, that was super awesome to see everybody's kids uh, up on the Jumbotron and announcing their names. And my boys, they they are my why. You know, they, they definitely enlighten me and push me um, every single night, every time I step on the floor. So, it was awesome to be able to see them. You know, they did a really good job, too. So maybe it's a future for them in, in that space. All right, Brad, that's it. Always say um, that you just kind of go out and do what's asked to do and help the team want to win. But in terms of when you're playing 11 guys and minutes are coming kind of sporadically, how do you go about managing taking advantage of your time on court? When I go on the court, for me, in my head, it doesn't matter when. It doesn't matter if it's a 20 minutes out. It doesn't matter if it's a 30 minutes out. If if I have a task, if coaches ask me to do something, if I need to do something for the team, and bring energy, play defense, play offense, whatever they need, um, I'll do it. 
So sometimes, of course, when it's goes uh, comes and goes, but I'm ready at all times, and I'm doing what the team needs me to do, and doing my job, and, and just playing hard, not thinking about it too much. What happened? Wes said you took a knee to the thigh. I took I took a knee to the thigh, and um, yeah, it, it uh, it's the kind of injuries that it's. It's kind of frustrating because it's frustrating because it's like it's not that bad. Like you know, it's not you're not out, but it's annoying. Like it sits there, but um, you know, I played through it, so uh, made a three with it. So maybe uh, I don't know. It was good for me. Turn one around. Turn. Uh, I think we did it before. I think we lost to teams by, by a lot of points before. I don't think that affects us. I think everybody's com confident in his um, game and we want to know what we're capable of and what we should do better. Uh, we always learn from our mistakes and we come better so it's not the first time it's going to happen and we just need to keep our head straight and uh, go through it you know what, what's it like at this level when you are playing against a guy like tatum who gets into a group the mm -hmm. way that he did tonight just trying to shut his water off and defend him being aggressive with him uh, maybe change some coverages here and there but when a guy is getting hard like that like to be honest with you there's nothing much you can do he took tough shots, he made tough shots, got fouled, went to the line. Um, nothing that I can say more than that. Neil? Yeah. Hey, Denny, I'm just curious, you know, what is the sense with the team about, you guys have talked a lot about, you know, we need more urgency, but, you know, seemingly it's not translating to the court. Why do you think that is? Um, I don't have an answer for you. Or I don't know, to be honest with you. Uh, I think we're preparing as best as we can for every game and take every game seriously. Some 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 games we're playing a little bit bad and sometimes we're playing good. And it's part of basketball, it's part of sport. Um, just need to stay focused. I'll turn it over to you, Ron. Hi, Danny. Navir the poor con call of Haverim. Pini Vaksha. Darbaron. Hi, Danny. Pini Ron. מרינוטה במשחק, משחקים אחרונים, בשלושת המשחקים האחרונים, צד יותר משוחרר. גם מרינוטה היום. קצת תופס את הרגל. ספר לנו, יכול להיות שאמרת לפני כן, פשוט לא שמענו פה בזום, קצת על איך אתה מרגיש ומה היה לך, אם זה, איך הרגשת כאילו עם המתיחה הזאת? זה לא מתיחה, זה קיבלתי בערך לארבע ראשי, לא נעים, אבל אתה יודע, היה לנו מצוין צוות רפואי מצוין בקבוצה, אז טיפלו בי במחצית קצת. ירדתי לחדר הלבשה בסוף הרבע הראשון, אבל זה לא משהו שהפריע לי לחזור ולשחק. התעקשתי, רציתי לשחק. הרגשתי טוב על המגרש גם אחרי זה. חוץ מזה, זהו, הרגע שתהיה בסדר גם להמשך. אחלה, ובשלושת המשחקים האחרונים, מאז מה שהיה עם פילי במשחק ששיחקת בו... קצת פחות משלוש דקות, אנחנו רואים שאתה גם מרגיש קצת יותר משוחרר בשפת גוף שלך, יכול להיות שהמשחק הזה דווקא עזר לך שנחת במשחק אחד כשאתה יותר דינאמי באמת במגרש? יכול להיות, יכול להיות שזה עזר לי, אני מרגיש טוב על המגרש, אני מאמין שכאילו גם עם הזמן אני לומד, אני באמת משתחרר, אני צובר יותר ביטחון, אני תמיד מוכן, גם במשחק אחרי פילי, לא לקחתי, לא לקחתי את זה ללב, וכמובן שהתבאסתי, אבל אני יודע מה אני שווה עוד פעם, אני, אני פה מסיבה מסוימת ואני עובד מאוד מאוד קשה, וגם במשחק נגד פילי שלא שיחקתי, אחרי המשחק הלכתי ועבדתי, ואז יום אחרי זה הלכתי ועבדתי, זאת אומרת ש, שאני לא לוקח את זה למקום רע, 
היית זמן לנוח לעבוד על המשחק שלי, להיות מוכן למשחקים הבאים, והנה אני אגיד בוקלין, הייתי מוכן, זרקו אותי למגרש, ואני חושב שעשיתי עבודה די בסדר. אז פשוט נשאר אופטימי בראש, ואסור לתת לזה יותר מדי לעבוד אותך למטה. אוקיי, ושאלה קטנה, אופי. כן, בר גלי צהר. שנייה, אני רוצה לשאול שאלה. כן, כן, בבקשה. תודה. כן, השאלה האחרונה שלי באמת, אחרי תקופה ארוכה שאתה יודע, גם דיברו על זה קצת בתקשורת, שאתה לא הטבעת, והרבה פעמים כזה הגעת כמעט היום, אתה הטבעת ונכנסת עם כל הכוח לדן כזה. אתה מרגיש שזה משהו שהיה צריך להשתחרר בך, משהו שהיה צריך לבוא עם השטף, תן לי קצת איזה אינפוט על זה. להדמיע אני יודע, זה לא שאני לא רוצה... זה ברור. יש פעמים אולי שאני כן מצפה למגע, אז אתה יודע, אני לא עולה להדמיע. אין לי סיבה כל כך בהזדמנות שיהיה להדמיע, אז כן, אבל לפעמים אני לא כל כך חושב על זה, כי אני יותר קורא את המגרש, או אני יודע שיבוא איזה גבוה, אז אני מוכן למסור לפעמים כאילו סיטואציות כאלה קורות, אבל סך הכל בהזדמנות שיהיו לי להדמיע, אני אדמיע. אחלה, דני. בר, בבקשה. שוב שלום, דני. פעם שעברה שדיברנו היה באזור היום הולדת שלך, אחרי הקריירה בחטיפות ואסיסטים. אז היית ממש בתקופת שיא בעונה הזאת, אולי אפילו בכל התקופה שלך ב-NBA. מאז חודש טיפה יותר קשה, שבועיים, שלושה יותר קשים. איך אתה מסתכל? כאילו, מה אתה צריך לשפר בשביל שהמשך העונה באמת תהיה מגמת עלייה, בשביל שתייצב את הדקות שלך בקבוצה? אני חושב שאני סך הכל יציב מאוד. יש משחקים שהולך פחות, יש משחקים שהולך יותר. עוד פעם, זה חלק מהכדורסל, אתה יודע, שחקן לא משלם מ-100%, נכון שהיה לי תקופה אולי קצת יותר טובה, ועכשיו אני שיחקתי פחות, אבל אני חושב שאני נשאר עם הראש במקום, אני יודע מה אני שווה. אני נשאר מוכן תמיד, ובשלושה משחקים האחרונים, עם זאת שלא שיחקתי במשחק נגד פילדלפיה, אני מאמין שראש שלי במקום, ואני עולה למגרש, ואני עושה מה שהקבוצה שלי צריכה ממני, ואני חושב שזה תמיד נמצא בי. וכמובן שיהיו תקופות כאלה ואחרות בכל עונה, שצריך להישאר תמיד אופטימי, תמיד לעבוד קשה, ו... זה לא עבור. ואיך אתה מסכם את האתגר שנקרא ג'ייסון טייטום הלילה? אני לא צריך לסכם כלום, אתה יכול להסתכל על הסטטיסטיקה ולראות את כמות הנקודות שהוא שם עליה, ויותר מזה אין לנו כל כך לב. טוב, תודה. תודה רבה. דני, נסיים רק עם שאלה אחת, באמת, איך היה חדר ההלבשה אחרי המשחק? ראיתי ערבים יותר טובים. משהו, אבל לא כאילו חירים בועשים, אתה יודע, בסוף המשחק, הרבה נקודות, הפרש ובועשים, יודעים שעשינו טעויות ואנחנו צריכים ללכת מחר ולתקן אותם, ונוכל במשחק הבא. תודה רבה. תודה רבה.